Everyone go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this practice cast between myself and ZK. We've got Drago matching up against Hydra, a high level match. Excited to get into it. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. So I'm just going to start us off right away as uh, Hydra already did a little moat pull at the start. So moat pull is when you bring the moat from the from the from the, from the scout from the sentries and bring him to your own tower to try and get a few extra kills and get the early pyre. Uh, so that's an advanced strategy you can use in uh, this early build of Immortal Gates of Pyre, which allows you to collect a bit of early pyre, uh, one of the third resource of this game. The first one being Aloy, and the second one being Aether. That, and Aether being the one you collect by building Aether Collectors. Uh, right. just, look, yeah, just looking at both teams right now, on the top left, we can see Drago already built two Aether Collectors to oppose those of Binding. And that's going to allow him to tech up a bit faster than his opponent. Whereas, uh, well, we'll see what Hydra is up to, actually. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, Hydra just went for a really fast expansion here. Really, really fun build. So Hydra going for a bit of a more tech, uh, more economic lead, uh, while Drago was going for a bit more of a tech lead to start this game off. Right, and that is top left, red, is going to be Drago, and bottom right, Hydra. Exactly. So, uh, so some units yeah. created right now. It looks like finally we will see the... Uh, Moths yeah. taken here, but that was yeah, scouted look, out. Can you, sorry, can you tell me a little bit about, in terms of macro, is it actually that important early on to get vision of your opponent clearing the pyre? Uh, clearing the pyre is not too important. Uh, what's really important here is mostly seeing if the opponent expands, you can know not too much tech is happening. Uh, Hydra just checked out for to see both bases of his little teapot here. The little teapot's going to check uh, if the opponent expanded, and he sees that his opponent not, so Drago's going for t some kind of uh, aggressive build or high-tech building. As you can see, he already built the Soul Foundry at his uh, first tower. Uh, Soul Foundry allowing you to build your second tier units. Uh, so yeah, uh, fun build. We can see that uh, they're both clearing their, their creep camps right now. Uh, uh, Drago is playing as a Jari, so his first unit is the Sipari. While for... Well, on the other side, we have Orzum for Hydra, who has his uh, Zentari that have a ranged attack once they're in the Hallow Ground. Hallow Ground being the little blue zone going across the tower. Perfect. So we're taking a look. Tower is being attempted to be created here, but, you know, take a little bit of damage. However, the army, much stronger here from the bottom right from Hydra, so he's able to push Drago away. Actually, it looks like there might be a little mini 1v1 going on, but reinforcements from the northwest side. They do clear the teapot. Vision obtained, and do they continue to push here? I don't know, ZK. Oh, I think it's going to be a small push, but to be fair, it's going to be four against uh, five units, and Orzum can have a bit of defensive lead, so even with the reinforce... Oh, look at all the Dervish coming in right now. Dervish coming in from the north, and they're going to be doing a lot of oh, damage. Just now it's not going to survive here. Here they come, a lot of damage. That AoE spin from each of them. Four units on top of the army that was already there. Forced to retreat. Blue in the bottom corner, and look at that. That turret is gone. Yeah, Hydra had, had no choice there but to let go of his of his tower. He couldn't let it finish, so he cancelled it and just went back to the safety of his hallowed ground. But to be fair, he still has his expansion, so it's not too much of a loss. The when you do cancel the tower, you get the pyre back. So really it's not too big of a loss right now for Hydra. I'd still put Hydra in a slight lead just because the expansion was that much faster. Mm hmm We do see some posturing here, however, from Drago, but he will be scouted out by the teapot still he knows the dervishes are there that is hydra and he's got a turret here is it going to be enough to dissuade the aggression oh yeah, man as you can see, two dervish of his own coming out for hydra hydra is really ready to defend this he also went for a third base while drago was just getting a second setup but he's also going for a third as well so the first little fight going on going for drago's side hydra's going to retreat and he's going to take he's going to probably going to try and take back the fourth tower going to send out the dervish to try and harass on the east side yeah we can see the dervish chasing one dervish mm -hmm. So one thing to point out in terms of both meta to our commentary practice and then just the state of the game in general, uh, due to the early state of the game, in terms of perspective, it can be difficult to see the economy, right? Whereas traditional... Oh, what's the service doing? Ah, eh, probably nothing. Uh, the Dervish die. did try to get a few kills, but I, Hydra was really quick. Yeah. Hydra is really one of the best players in the game, so he's really good at, at moving his uh, moats away. You can see another moat pole now moving away from the Dervish. Dervish yep. can't go to the tower. So it's going to die a peaceful death here. Yeah, so it's important to note, and we can start to see the paying dividends. What we can't necessarily see in regards to economy, there is a lead right now for Hydra for sure. He was able to dissuade that early aggression, right? Like you said, he expanded earlier. He's building higher tech units. He's biding his time. And because he hasn't taken too many losses, really any losses, right? Like you said, microing those moats away, he's looking very strong as we scale into this mid-game point. Yeah, so the other thing you can notice is often when you are going to be a bit more defensive like that, uh, Drago on the other side of the map was able to take a bit more map control, so he might have a bit more pyre. 
And Pyre, we didn't quite mention it quite yet, Pyre allows you to use your Immortal abilities. And the Immortal abilities are, uh, for a jar, the best one that we have right now is one that allows you to go back home, to uh, teleport back home. Uh, so that's a very powerful fairy. You try to move into the opponent's base and just try to do some damage and don't want to lose your whole army. You can just teleport back home with a recall from Evo, it's called in this game. So if you don't mind me asking, historically speaking, we know that Hydra is considered the top player in Immortal as of right now. Uh, player base is obviously quite small, but he has a lot of experience in other RTS game, RTS games. Drago, though, no slouch, am I right? Oh, definitely. Drago has been playing a lot, and what I like about Drago is he doesn't try to to, to just keep up the meta. He tries to build his own his own build orders. He doesn't do what's stronger. He always tries to find out his own things. We could see at the start of the game he went for a quick Dervish attack, uh, which was very original, not something we usually see. Mm -hmm. uh, it paid some dividends. He was able to cancel the tower, uh, but then Hydra is the greatest of all time for a reason so far. He is our GOAT, uh, has lost. He mostly plays 1v1. I think in 1v1 he's lost maybe one game the past two months or so. Like, he's that good at this game. It's not as if we don't have good players right now. We have uh, Euphermal from, from StarCraft 2, who is a top, top player. Right. Uh, we, yeah, so it's, Hydra it's... has just... Ironically, Hydra being the best right now is credit because the the player base is small, but it's full of elite players. You know, most of the players who have access to this game are previous StarCraft II players. Or, oh, we see the recall, the teleport back coming out. They do take a couple of losses, and there is a throne coming into the base. It will take care of some moats, I believe. No, actually, it's just going to one v one the other throne. Oh yeah, and that's going to be that's going to be a win for Hydra. He attack, started attacking the other throne a bit faster. Yep. So he's going to slow. Barely lead this. There's going to be a Blade of the Godhead going down to try to kill a few moats, but again, Hydra reacting really quickly there. Yeah, that was uh, an interesting attempt. I mean, honestly, had that worked out and you trade one throne for two moats, maybe? I don't even think that would have been worth no. it, considering how big the throne is, how much it costs. Yeah, definitely. Generally, what you want to do with these, this type of throne harass, which is part of the matter, really. Like, Euphermo, again, one of the top players, really likes bringing his throne around, just harassing with it. And since usually there's no anti-air at that point, you can just harass it, go back into corners, and hide for a little bit. So, very strong unit. Uh, the strongest unit right now in the arsenal of Croft. But, you know, uh, we use it for harassment. We don't need, to, need it for the army. We just use it to kill some moats. <laughs> yeah. I, I would not try that at home. I didn't, I didn't think that was something that he actually wanted to do, but that's how it ended up playing out. Okay, we see a little bit of contesting over this pyre. I'm not sure who actually was able to get it. Was it the steal from Hydra's side? I do think Drago was able to get it, but to be fair, at this point, there's a lot of power going on on both sides, and I haven't seen Hydra use his much. So he's going to be able right. to use his Pillar of the Heavens whenever he wants, and the Pillar is a strong ability that does a lot of damage and gives you a small hell of ground. We'll probably end up seeing it sooner or later, uh, and when we do, you'll see a lot of damage going down on Drago's army. Uh, Drago's just going to deny the tower here. Not too big. Uh, Hydra cancels it in time, and nothing much happens. Yeah, so as far as army composition is concerned, we see a couple of units that are both on both sides, quite advanced, right? Can you talk to me about the army comp for Drago? Because it seems like he has more units, right? But that doesn't uh, yeah, so, always mean you win. No, definitely not. Like, there are different roles for the units. So we can see here the, the units of the hula hoops on their hands. Uh, those are the absolvers. They have a zone control type unit. So when they go into through hula hoop mode, they put a hula hoops over their heads. I really like the word hula hoops. <laughs> uh, it just goes over the head and they turn the low attack from from a small, short attack to a machine gun attack that attacks three times as quickly. Yeah, so we see some harass from the throne and a couple of dervishes from Hydra means that actually Drago has had a couple of moats here that have not been mining for quite some time. Maybe he's just spending too much time uh, trying to micro his army and you know, that is definitely a skill that can be hard to do, microing your army while also keeping control of your bases at the same time, but it's something he's got to do here because Hydra is just consistently pulling ahead. Oh, Hydra with the nice fire still right there. Very nice. Drago did all this, did all the work, but Hydra just comes in from the back and takes it. As they oh, say in Hy um, MOBAs, thanks for the leash. <laughs> Hydra feeling confident right now is going to go for a bit of a push. Well, no, he's going to pull back before he gets into the opponent's uh, hollow ground. The, uh, the Sharo on the other side did kill all the moats on the bottom right there, so it used its uh, off strike to kill all the moats, a small AoE attack that does 120 damage. Enough, enough to destroy all the moats there. Yeah, and you got to consider, for... that's actually a pretty good pick, right? Because he's able to kill the moats, and the way that moats replenish, they replenish over time. As that's far nice. as cost is concerned, he can't just buy six moats, right? And get them back all at the same time. No, exactly. Uh, well, the things you can do, there are some small strategies. You can, like, as you don't control the production, you can move some moats from base to base just to mm -hmm. at least, like, all the base are producing at once. That's a pretty advanced technique, and 
I feel it's something that's going to be created as the game advances. Right now, it's not too too uh, popular right now. Right. It, I, it's going to come with time. Yeah, I, I do agree. And we might even see things change in terms of how moats replenish at all, right? Because that can yeah, be exactly. devastating if you have bases, but no moats. Yeah, exactly. That's the advantage right now, the game being in a in a small, in a, uh, uh, still in free alpha. Everything is still willing to change. Ooh, Casting gear is killing it for right now. Yeah. Uh, Good try there. Drago's macro has been good. He's amassed quite an army, and he's definitely trying to go for pretty high level plays, but I do think he's stretching himself a little bit thin. I mean, I might be wrong, like maybe he's okay with losing these thrones, but it doesn't really seem like he's gotten much value out of it at all. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately he doesn't get much value. Like, you know, like all RTS games, it's all about out multitasking your opponent, trying to get them out of position, trying to do as much damage, and now a small fight going on here. We're just gonna take a look at this, a few uh, uh, attempts going down. Yeah, they're trying to set up to do extra damage, but they are forced away. Yeah, the, as soon as as soon as they're set up, you don't really want to fight there. But the Sharus are perfect for taking them out quickly. Yep. Their Tempest or the Alshrek are both a strong ability that can take out them out really quickly. There's a few Talors as well on the on the Hydra side that are good for dislodging, uh, for killing those from afar. I think we saw the buff from the oh, immortal come down which uh meant that there was no way to contest right hydra used his ability there uh yeah exactly the tower of, the, the pillar from the heavens is always great mm -hmm. uh yeah uh, so now there's a throne on the top side oh, going to do some could be a big fight actually is either side getting committed to this i'm not sure hydra is backing away the armies are about equal in size so it's all about the micro and all about the composition one dervish does make it to the back line how much damage can he get down not enough for a kill but nice try and like you said there is actually a hydra uh, a Hydra throne in Drago's base. Yeah, exactly. I'm just going to do as much damage as I can. going to try and kill a few moats here and there. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, my game is uh, lagging a bit. Oh. Uh, so I'm not seeing the action in full view. So. Uh, All right, just let I... me know when you're back. We see a little no, bit no, of poking. I'll... Yeah, I'll have, to, I'll, I'll, try to, I'll have to cancel my recording, unfortunately. So is this going to be on YouTube? Hopefully it's no worries. Gonna I, if, you, if you want, I can send you the VOD, no problem. And then you can put it up. Oh yeah, that'd be good. Alright, we're um, yeah. with that. Alright, so we do see a fight break out here. Yeah, another fight. All about position. We're going for the first position. The Sharos coming in again. Uh, throwing down their spells. Tempest as well. You can see the small circle on the ground. The Tempest allows you to also heal your own unit. It's not only uh, damage the opponent. So a strong a strong, a strong, strong spell of two facets to it. Yeah, a question I have for you is, as you definitely have more experience in this category. Uh, there is a lot of aerial power right with all these sharus in drago's army is there enough anti-air for hydra to handle this uh well the anti-air is the castigators you see the little spider-like units that mm -hmm. uh, can move back and forth uh, they have a very strong anti-air they even do extra damage to spellcasters in the air so they do extra damage to, to air units extra damage to uh, spellcasters so if you can get in position you are able to deny air pretty well oh we can see that pillar used. It's going to be a very strong buff as well as a little bit of damage. It looks like this could be the all-important fight. The recall has been prepped. I thought maybe I'm just... Tri oh, okay, right? He used it there. Uh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm just getting a little familiar. I mean, I'm pulling us out of the cast in terms of professionalism. But that was the recall used, right? But it like only hit a couple people? Or am I lagging Yeah, uh, I'm the one lagging, so I can't really tell you, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm really hoping... Uh, Next time I won't record and hopefully I'll be able to see the game normally. No um, worries. Maybe something you could do for me. Would you be able to uh, stream your game on Discord as well? So I can follow yep. through there. I can do Thank that. You. No problem. Thank you. And this is why we practice, guys. <laughs> um, screen one. Boop. Actually, no. I'll try and get you sound too. This shouldn't cause right. any performance issues, but, you know. Yeah, if it does, we'll just stop. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Cool. Ah, uh, yes, perfect. I can see the game again, just yep. like I like it. <laughs> Let me alt tab really quickly to get my cheat sheet back up. All right, we are good. So, army mobility, pyre being acquired by both sides, both both players probably with a decent amount of pyre. It looks like Draco is still trying to be the aggressor here. He has been the aggressor for most of the game. Will it pay off? And actually, ju just going to be a base both trade. Them, both yeah. armies really going for each other's opposite bases. Yeah, so they're both going to be pretty equal on economy from there, but then you look at the top right, and, and Hydra's uh, harassing there as well. So, oh, actually, Hydra took that base as well, so Hydra has just an extra base on, the, on Drago, so that's really going to be an advantage for him. Oh man, look at that. Drago is going to commit with the aggression here. The base has not been protected so far, and the army is closer, obviously, from Drago. There is Hydra's going to move back. 
Yeah, yeah. Hydra's just gonna move back. He's gonna lose a few bases, He's... but to be fair, it's not that bad. Uh, Drago's not mining much more than Hydra, especially if Hydra can get his top base mining. He has his top bottom left as well. I, I will say on, on a meta commentary note in terms of like being in pre-alpha, this is where it'd be really interesting to look at how much value each player is currently sitting on, right? Because Yeah, definitely. definitely. Depending uh, on but... how much money he has, I, I, I'm sure he's fine on Alloy because he has like 12 million bases. Um, but that was technically just a free base taken by Drago. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, uh, it's all about how many bases you have mining. And Hydra had the top right and bottom left bases. Yep, that's true. Uh, so both of them give a bit of value. He's going to lose the top top right now, but he still was able to mine there for a while. The tower's going to be able to defend. Ooh, the Shar is going to do a lot of damage here if they're able to get their Tempest off. Looks oh, like no. uh, Drago is being pushed away. It's taking quite a bit of damage. Yeah, exactly. Uh, a base being set up by Drago. He doesn't really have any other options in terms of placing Town Halls anywhere, but that is not a great position. That is not safe at all. And while Drago might be sitting on some reserve of alloy right now, one thing we do know, if he doesn't get bases up quickly and defend them soon, he is in big trouble and will quickly run out to sustain his army. Yeah, exactly. That's often how these games end right now. There's not enough resources. This is not the biggest map we expect. This is probably on the smaller side. Even no, for one for one, is probably a, the the size you expect. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, there's going to be more resources as we as the game progresses. We get more maps. This is just the first map that's perfect for playtesting. Right. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, more resources right now is what determines who wins or loses. Often enough, it's going to be who takes a better fight, and you always have to be in position. So the scouts were very important for that. So let's see that Pyre is being obtained. Both players should be on a decent reserve, I think, of Pyre still, as they've only really yeah. poked back and forth. No crazy commitment. Yeah, but what we can see right now is that Alloy is starting to mine out on the main bases, on the first three bases, yes. are pretty much mined out for both players. Uh, so it's really going to be about taking more bases. Hydra's taking back the base and on the top right side. Oh, here's the pillar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's just going to give him a bit of buff if he decides to go back there. It does give him an extra attack speed once he's in that zone as well as Lang Oz Zentari, the little swordsman, to have an, uh, a ranged attack as well. But yeah, they're, they're moving. Hydra's just keeping map control right now, making sure Drago is stuck at home. Uh, he's going to yeah. get a bit more pyre, which is always good to, for the next pillar he wants to put down. Drago might want to go kill the pillar while he can. Uh, at the same time, no, Derv is stuck in rocks. Oh, he's unfortunate to see that. If you're Hydra, you are definitely sitting pretty here. Yeah, it does have a base that uh, is lower and uh, farther south. He's going to lose two thrones here, which is not great. Actually, maybe that throne lives? Okay, he lost yeah, one throne. Actually, he actually oh. uses uh, his immortal ability right there. He used Infuse, which allows the unit to have a 30% speed boost. So the throne made it a lot just thanks to that uh, small maneuver. Wow, uh, look at his aggression. Hide. Yeah, no, it's perfect. He got his opponent out of position with the thrones, and then is going to try and do a bit of damage on the other side. Really smart play from Hydra. Uh, throne coming in with a Cascader Oof. there. There's some Tepes going down. Tepes is doing a lot of damage on his units, all very damaged. He might move back and go back to his tower to try and heal a bit. Uh, but at the same time, Hydra took back the base on the top right and at the top left. So Hydra just has map control of all the economy right now. So it's going to be a very hard... Drago can still win this. He just needs to take the better fights because it's all about winning the fights in this game still. If, you, right. if you're able to outmaneuver, it's better to have more economy. But if you're able to just outmaneuver your opponent and have a better fight, you can still win this. And the army composition, it's all about the Sharus. Sharus do the most damage with the Zephyrs that are being able to... Uh, Take a bit more damage, but Hydra is the greatest of all time for a reason, so it might be a bit hard. He's gonna Drago's gonna take out a base right now while long distance mining from the other side. Yeah, we do see the long distance mining, and look at that. All these votes are easy targets for Hydra, just scooping them up, and he's gonna go for the Acropolis. Maybe some mo survive, but the base is surely going to go down. There it is. This large army from Drago, however, not gonna capitulate that easy. He's actually just gonna go for the main structures, the main base of Hydra. Are they just gonna make a base trade happen here? Uh, it does look that way. Uh, yeah, Hydra, Drago is just going into the base and Hydra is doing the same. Hydra might believe in his army a bit more. He has a few more Halorus. He's able to pick off armies from a distance a bit more easily than his opponent could. Uh, but it's come down again to position. Oh, the Castigo is gonna be picked off coming out of the wrong time. Oh, a few yeah. Sharus as well. Hopefully yeah. the Sharus might be able to do some damage, but they should be running away right now. You don't want them to be caught out like that. Oh man, the Castigator is here, and the Castigator is... Yeah, Castigator is going to take out really quickly. Drago might actually have this. If yeah, he might. To, like, if you're able to take out all the production structures exactly. of your opponent, he's not going to be able to reproduce anything. There's but obviously, we see that the structure is still up. We can see the entire map, and we know that Hydra 
still has production structures up. The question is, can Drago clear them all? Because he's actually committing to this all in. Here comes Hydra's army. But of and course, Ajari. Brilliantly Deliver done. People. And that, at the same time, you can see that Hydra separated his army in two. So now the army that's stuck in the main is just going to be killed really quickly here. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, there is one base that we saw that TP come back to. Oh, he's actually... Wow, Hydra's not even going to be able to finish this. That might have been a costly loss. We'll have to see how it plays out in this endgame as we are going into 25 minutes then some. This is probably one of the longest high-level games of Mortal I have seen so far. Yeah, uh, and we're not done yet. No, definitely. Uh, it's, it's still going to come down to big engagement. Hydra is still upmining his opponent. But uh, yeah. in this game as well, when you lose a production structure, you also lose the ability to produce units, as it does also provide the supply. So with all the production buildings he did lose, he loses a lot of supply here. So Draco right now, is, he might be the one to take out another another game out of, uh, of our good friend Hydra. And let's see, we can see that this uh, rock wall has survived, but it will be taken out. The moats have been still mining for Drago in a different mineral patch, a different alloy patch. So they really need to travel to make that happen. But hey, he's got a massive army here. Yeah, I really love the army of uh, of uh, Drago with all the Bromes there. However, the Howlers are able to take off the units at a distance, but the Castigators are still here. The Blades of the Godhead go down, he tries to get the units, but with a Telegraph attack there, uh, Hydra is able to get out of the way before they did any damage. Yeah, the footsies there from both players. Hydra will retreat. They are standing in the hallowed ground for uh, HP regen that is given to any yep. Karoth unit. Yeah, within as long as you're near a tower. So the tower is the is its one of its main purposes besides doing some damage, and helping protect in the early game, uh, really helping for uh, for any type of player that to survive any type of early attempt. So if you hated playing starcraft or whatnot because of the cannon rushes well yep. it might be a bit easier here with uh, with towers helping to defend everything oh man that was the bane of my existence still is the bane of my exist my existence but hey we just play immortal then all right here we go armies matching up again we are oh man gotta be careful yeah they're good they're both posturing but they're both gonna move back they don't want to take this fight unless they're sure they're going to win it and these two armies are way too close to have really to know for sure who's gonna win uh, the halberd right. is still good to the Hallowers are really good right now for Hydra because they're able to take out units at a distance. While his opponent might not be able to quite as much. So Drago would want to jump on his opponent, but he never really wanted to jump on your opponent. Oh, the pillar's Engagement. coming down. The pillar is going to go down a lot of damage. However, Hydra, not sure if he wants to commit to this. Can they pick Hydra's one unit off? Hydra's moving forward. He can get the shower. The shower is always an important unit you want to pick him up. He's going to stay at the tower. He's going to try to regen a bit, but the mana's down. And without the mana, you can't cast your spells. Yeah, Hydra uh, yeah, still might go for this, though. Oh, a deliver from evil. I think that was a miss. Oh, man, that was the yeah, spell you that... wanted to use. That was a misclick there. He probably wanted to use Heaven's Aegis or something just to get 100 extra shields. A very powerful spell for uh, for Ajari. He might not get the power for a long time. Uh, yeah, so Hydra is still mining, and Draco is only long-distance mining. I wonder if he's going to try and take the base back now instead of <clears throat> keeping the long-distance mining. We're going to see how it goes. Uh... But so far, he seems satisfied with just his long distance. And yeah, we will see a turret being the focus of Hydra. Doesn't want to commit, though, because he knows that Drago has his army nearby. Why not just play smart, not too aggressive, not take any unnecessary risks? Hydra seems to have a really consistent style. I haven't seen too much of him play StarCraft, but he does play Protoss. That's probably yeah, that pretty similar there. Yeah, he plays Protoss at a close to... 5800 level, so very high, high level. High oh, level the throne! Ooh. That throne is 1 HP! It does go down! Drago's throne goes down too, though, so it's a trade so far. It looks like Hydra just wants to go in for the kill at this moment. That is the pillar used, the ultimate coming down, or I don't know if they're called ultimates, it's just a costly ability, right? And oh man, the Drago. Blades of the Godhead, able to do 120 damage in one shot. Oh, that's very, very powerful. Wow, Drago is in big trouble here. Just a couple of Zephyrs. Yeah. The GG comes out, and after a grueling 29 minute match, that will be victory over to Hydra.